A Brief History of Punishment in Ancient Persia Although the Persians are often seen as the kings of creative punishment, in reality, across the ancient world, there was similar brutality in all civilizations. Unfortunately, the ancient Persians just weren't that big on writing stuff down, which means we have to rely on historical accounts written hundreds of years later. The most notable of these was by Herodotus, a Persian-born ancient Greek historian. And although Herodotus is now known as the father of history, it's still not the most reliable method of information. Putting it lightly, he and other ancient Greeks weren't exactly the Persians' biggest fans. It's possible a lot of punishments on this list were embellished over time and, then again, when written down centuries later. That being said, the Persians definitely had some extremely, um, creative forms of punishment and execution. Let's look at some of the worst. Yeah. Scafism. Remember the old adage, you can catch more flies with honey than with vinegar? Enter scafism. From the Greek word meaning boat, scafism was one of the worst forms of execution in ancient Persia. The first mention of scafism is in the works of Greek philosopher and historian Plutarch, although the event he discusses occurs 100 years before his time. Given the Greco-Persian War, and that relations between the two societies weren't exactly friendly, it's highly probable Plutarch embellished some of the details. If true, however, it's easily one of the worst punishments in the history of any civilization, not just the Persians. When King Artaxerxes was on the throne, his younger brother Cyrus challenged his rule. A young Persian soldier named Mithridates killed Cyrus during the rebellion and later was sentenced to death by scaphism. Although Artaxerxes initially rewarded Mithridates handsomely for his deed, he wanted everyone to think that he had killed Cyrus personally. And so, when Mithridates, drunk on too much wine, boasted that it was he who was responsible for Cyrus's death, he also sealed his own fate. And so King Artaxerxes ordered Mithridates' execution via scaphism. Plutarch writes of what this entails. Taking two boats, framed exactly to fit and answer each other, they lay down in one of them the malefactor that suffers upon his back, then covering it with the other, and so setting them together that the head, hands, and feet of him are left outside, and the rest of his body lies shut up within. They offer him food, and if he refuse to eat it, they force him to do it by pricking his eyes. Then, after he has eaten, they drench him with a mixture of milk and honey, pouring it not only into his mouth, all over his face. They then keep his face continually turned towards the sun, and it becomes completely covered up and hidden by the multitude of flies that settle on it. And, as within the boats he does what those that eat and drink must needs do, creeping things and vermin spring out of the corruption and rottenness of the excrement, and these entering into the bowels of him, his body is consumed. Apparently, it took Mithridates 17 days to die, putting scaphism in the number one slot of bad ways to go. Magi and Magophonia Zoroastrianism is one of the oldest known religions, although it doesn't enter written history until 5 BC. After Cyrus the Great conquered their land, the priests of Zoroastrianism, called Magi, integrated into Persian society. This went well until Cyrus's son, Smerdis, died. Allegedly, the Magi used his death to place a lookalike on the throne and seize control of Persia. But their success was short-lived as Darius I assassinated the new king a few months later, taking the throne and slaughtering every Magi found in the city and castle in the process. According to Herodotus, if nightfall had not stopped them, they would not have left one Magus alive. In reality, it's highly likely the Magi imposter was a story created by Darius I. In his short time on the throne, Smerdis had become a popular king, 
and Darius had to justify his usurpation and secure his position. Concocting a story of the Magi and their imposter fit the bill perfectly. But killing Magi just the once wasn't sufficient for the newly appointed king. He introduced the Festival of Magophonia, an annual event Herodotus writes of where Persians ate, drank, and celebrated the almost genocide of the Magi. And, in a purge-like twist, any Magi outside on the day of Magophonia had zero protection from the empire, with Persians systematically hunting down and painfully killing any they came across. Suffocation by Ash Did you know, most people who die in fires expire long before the flames reach them from smoke inhalation? Whilst the Persians didn't normally burn people to death, there are a few records of cases where they would suffocate people with ash for rebellion against the crown. At one point, the Persian Empire was in such disarray that upon the death of Artaxerxes I, three of his sons declared themselves king at the same time. Xerxes II, Ochus, crowned Darius II, and Sogdianus. Although this wasn't the case for long, it's a landmark moment in human history as all three named themselves King of Kings in an attempt to position themselves higher than their brothers. Talk about family rivalry. Sogdianus's conspirators murdered Xerxes after just 45 days, but Sogdianus himself was king for only six months and 15 days before Ochus captured him and put him to death by ash suffocation, ultimately winning the brotherly war. He chose this execution method for his brother, as, with a flair for the dramatic, he had once promised Sogdianus he would not die by the sword, by poison, or by hunger. Placed in a room or tower with access from the top, ash would be slowly churned in from above. Each fresh addition would cause the settled ash to rise and swirl around the confined space. The convicted would be forced to inhale, slowly burning and suffocating themselves from the inside out. Flayed alive. Flaying alive is a method of punishment where your skin is literally stripped from your body, like peeling a potato. Although potatoes don't scream as much. Ancient Persia was far from the only civilization to use this method of torture and punishment. Flaying alive has been recorded in many cultures over thousands of years. As written by Herodotus, again, the most famous use of this punishment in ancient Persia was on the corrupt judge Sisamnes, who accepted a bribe to change a verdict on a prisoner. As punishment for his crime, he was flayed alive and his skin was used to cover the judge's chair that his son ended up sitting upon. Not an enjoyable experience for either of them, we imagine. Stoning to death. First of all, stoning has nothing to do with someone getting high. In the ancient world, it was a common method of execution most often associated with biblical times. But there were, in fact, many societies who used this method of punishment, and indeed, it seems ancient Persia was one of them. Stoning was often a public execution, where a criminal would be tied to a post, and people would throw stones at them until they eventually died of blunt force trauma. This punishment was usually reserved for thieves, adulterers, and blasphemers. Crucifixion it wasn't only Jesus that died on the cross. Crucifixion was a common form of punishment across the Persian and Macedonian empires. Next. Crucifixion. Yes. Good. Out of the door, line on the left, one cross each. Next. Crucifixion. Yes. Good. Usually used to punish slaves, pirates, or enemies of the state. These criminals would be strung up on heavy wooden crosses or planks, kept aloft by only their arms, forced to endure days of agony in the blistering sun with no food or water as they gradually suffocated under their own body weight. Impalement. Impalement was the punishment for those accused of a multitude of crimes, including robbery, trade disputes, treason and rebellion, and violation of military policies. This method was not unique to the Persians, like crucifixion, it was found in various cultures and time periods, including the Ottoman and Roman empires. When someone was impaled for their crimes, it meant that they were penetrated, 
and not in the good way, around their lower back by a spear or stake that was then thrust through their torso and out of their mouth. One of the most famous accounts of impalement comes once again from our good pal Herodotus, who wrote that upon Darius I's successful conquest of Babylon, he sent a message to its citizens by impaling 3,000 Babylonians on stakes and leaving their corpses for all to see. Human Footstool This one deserves an honorable mention. Even though it's nowhere near as brutal as the other punishments on the list, the human footstool makes the video because of who was forced to endure it. In 260 AD, the Roman Emperor Valerian was captured by the Persian Emperor Shapur I, making him the first ever Roman Emperor prisoner of war. To add insult to injury, Shapur reportedly treated Valerian as his own personal footstool, forcing the emperor on his hands and knees so that his back could be used as a leg up when Shapur mounted his horse. This continued for months before Valerian was eventually killed by Shapur, either by flaying or forcibly drinking molten gold. But it was the injustice of being treated as a footstool that was far more humiliating for the disgraced emperor. Enjoy learning about ancient punishment and torture? There's more where that came from. Subscribe to A Day in the Life of for more creepy historical stories.